Dragon Quest The Adventure of Die A Hero's Bonds is a new mobile RPG from Square Enix. The game is based on the manga serialization and now anime of the same name. In The Adventure of Die, combat happens in real time. Players move their character between three lanes as they automatically run forward and attack. Using a combination of skills and movement, you must defeat waves of enemies before taking on a boss. And this is a gacha game, and you're going to be pulling for weapons mainly on banners, although you're going to be able to collect some characters and some skills as well. Uh, and with that said, let's take a closer look at the gameplay loop, combat, story, and gacha elements of this game. The gameplay loop in The Adventure of Die is fairly standard. There are many chapters of story to complete, each with a beginner, intermediate, and advanced difficulty to attempt. There's also going to be your classic daily chambers to farm materials, character quests to increase the bonds between your characters, and then your time-limited events that will offer the tried and true experience of farming for medals and then spending those medals in shops to get stuff, although you do get a pretty cool character from the very first shop. Uh, there's also a game mode called The Halls of Perdition, but I have not unlocked it yet I'm not far enough in the story so whatever and then uh, there's also going to be multiplayer however that's not going to come out until the official release so in the adventure of die your main focus is going to be powering up your character and you can do this by leveling them up farming materials to unlock their further potential there's also a vocational system and you can think about jobs from Final Fantasy and that will be another further point of customization you can also unlock and get new skills to give all your characters and you'll be able to level up all of your equipment evolve it so it has a higher um, level cap and power up your characters that way I also want to mention that this game has a six minute stamina a recharge, uh, but there are stamina potions, it's not going to be as bad as Dragon Quest of the Stars. Combat in The Adventure of Die is the most unique part of the game. Your character automatically runs forward in one of three lanes, and you will swipe the screen to switch between the lanes. You can also dash forwards and backwards, which you'll need to do so in order to dodge attacks. Uh, and I actually recorded all of this footage on my tablet. I found it pretty unwieldy to play with, however, since then I've downloaded it onto my phone and I've found the experience to be much smoother. You're also going to be able to block with the right timing, uh, and you can also dash towards enemies and catch them off guard. Timing is key in the adventure of die. Using skills at the right time means you can actually disrupt an enemy and put them into a, you guessed it, a break state. You can also push enemies backwards and even knocking them through obstacles. However, if you allow an enemy to push you back, you're going to run out of room to dodge in. Uh, you're also going to be able to control two different characters and you can tap to switch between them and use both their skills and their uh, special abilities. And then you're also going to have two NPC controlled characters that automatically automatically fight beside you, but you'll be able to use their special abilities whenever you want to blast the enemy, heal yourself, or just prepare your units for whatever onslaught is coming your way. There's also two different types of auto modes. The regular auto mode will have your characters move and attack and all that kind of stuff, but you're going to have to use all your abilities yourself. And then there's full auto mode that takes care of literally everything for you, so feel free to enjoy a taco or any sort of delicious treat of your choosing while you play. Every Dragon Quest game I've played has had a terrific story and The Adventure of Die is no exception. The art style and graphics are all visually appealing and very colorful. The tale of Dai becoming a hero, it's, it's a classic shonen storyline, and that's not a criticism because it's its classic because it works. Uh, I honestly felt like I was watching uh, the original Dragon Ball, and I really appreciated the high quality Japanese voice acting. While the entire story is not going to be voice acted, the character portraits and animations are very pleasing to see. So the story mode in The Adventure of Dai has two campaigns. The first is going to focus on the original storyline of Dai, where he travels to become stronger to eventually take on the dark. Dark King Vern, while the second campaign focuses on a mirror world, Melodosia, where your character, uh, your original character that you make, is the hero. And with the help of Pinky, a friendly Draki, you're going to summon heroes like Dai, uh, like Pop, and then all other sorts of characters to take on Zevolo, Lord of the Void, who is bent on destroying you guessed it, both worlds. At the start of the game, you're going to create your own original character, and while the choices are a little bit limited, I think it's still a very cool point 
kind of customization. Your hero is also going to change your appearance whenever uh, you change your gear, and that's also very cool as well. So so far the story hasn't been too difficult, but uh, I've only you know played the first of the three difficulties. Also, uh, the combat and the story missions are split up as separate entities, uh, which is a feature I wish that all gachas would just implement. Alright, here's the part that a lot of you were waiting for, the gacha systems. So the gacha system in the Adventure of Die will have you pulling on banners for weapons. Currently the highest rarity is 4 star, uh, and when you pull a weapon it's going to have varied stats, it's going to have different traits that will give you skills, uh, and it's also going to have the 3 to 4 star weapons are going to have abilities associated with them, and some weapons will be you know, restricted to certain characters, or even restricted to specific vocations. So when you go to build your team, you're going to want be you know very careful planning uh, what you're gonna pull for because you have to identify which allies and vocations you're using before you chase any weapons on a banner the rate for pulling a four-star weapon is roughly three percent which is kind of low in my opinion uh, three-star weapons are significantly easier to obtain at 21.9 percent and whenever you pull a 10 shot you're gonna get a free uh, you know three star automatically uh, at least a three star at least and then there's a pity system called treasure points and once you've collected a hundred of those you can make a, a pull on a new banner and it has a select list of what's on it. In the case of the startup banner that's currently running, you're guaranteed a piece of four star equipment. However, that could be a weapon or uh, a piece of armor. So right now, each summon on this banner is going to give you 10 treasure points. So after 100 summons, you're going to be able to pull on that pity banner and then a 10 shot summon is going to cost you 3,000 gems and right now uh, you can you can earn those through the story you can earn those through the daily missions and then through your event quests and all that kind of stuff so pulling for weapons is important because you're going to need to pull dupes of weapons in order to evolve them and raise their level cap even further. Now, if you're freaking out about pulling dupes to get the most out of your equipment, uh, the other Dragon Quest game, Dragon Quest of the Stars, also had this system and they did give you items later on that allowed you to uh, evolve your gear automatically and then you didn't need to have a dupe. So we can expect that at some point, I'm sure. So I do actually want to recognize that Dragon Quest of the Stars, another Dragon Quest game, is closing soon. So the developers decided to close the game right after the one year anniversary, and they made the mistake of like talking about new content and what they were going to do, uh, and they had the, all these amazing deals for money, people spent thinking the game was going strong, and then the shutdown notice came. Uh, because of this, I don't see myself spending in this game until I get a sense of its possible longevity. One positive note I can share about this game is that it does have some of the elements of Dragon Quest of the Stars that I really enjoyed, uh, but on a whole, I think this game is a lot more accessible than that game was, uh, so that's good. It's time to wrap this video up and finish my summary. So Dragon Quest The Adventure of Daya Heroes Bonds is a tongue twister, but it's also a fun and engaging game. Uh, this game's currently in closed beta test, they're going to do a wipe and then it will come out eventually. Uh, I've definitely enjoyed it enough to play it again at release, although I am going to be wary about spending in this game until I see how it is supported. Overall though, I do think this game is going to be worth playing, even if it's just for the fun story and to mess around with some beautiful animated special abilities.